What's up guys, my name's Collins Newey. Post Up is my stream and I'm thrilled to be bringing you guys the 2024 US Open Championships out of Griff's Bar and Billiards. We're gonna be bringing you US Open 10 ball, US Open 8 ball, US Open bank pool, and US Open one pocket straight through every day till March 16th. We're bringing it to you live from Griff's Bar and Billiards right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, I just wanna let you guys know, I don't treat my stream like a typical pool stream. I don't treat it like that sports broadcast model. I treat it like I'm hanging out with you guys at home in the chat, super interactive, fun, lighthearted. We get down and we have a good time. The best part is, if you don't like that style, you can just hit the mute button and enjoy some of the best pool in the world. It's basically a who's who of the best players from around the world. Either way, come check it out and let's have some fun. I'm gonna travel with Francisco to Spain. Yeah, I heard this tournament. I heard that you're rooming with Francisco right yeah, now. Yeah, right. How's that going? Uh, he's kind of a goofball, isn't he? He's fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's fun, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I was talking to him last night and he said, Mario, I'm going to win this tournament. I said, sure, I believe in you. <laughs> okay. And he's very confident in this tournament right now. I played him in the winner's side yeah. last 16, I think. And I played a safety on one on zero zero. He kicked me a crazy ball in. Uh -huh. And after that, he was playing like perfect. He had maybe one dry break more. Yeah. And before that he said he doesn't feel like playing eight ball and after that said he said oh he's gonna win the tournament yeah <laughs> i'm like okay <laughs> it's funny how things can shift go for it boys we're ready to go if you want to lag they're i think they're asking are we ready is the timing good i love the way francisco walks it's he's got kind of a strut you know what i mean yeah <laughs> he's got kind of like this swagger yeah he's down to business the way he swings his arms Yeah, you guys look like you all have a lot of fun together when you're uh, yeah out there just kind of in between matches mm -hmm. or whatever. It looks really fun. Yeah, we are we are mostly grouping together. You know, like yeah, it's not always the same group, but like this this time it's Albin, Max, me. Yeah. Oh my and gosh! Francisco. Look at this lag. Oh. Look at this lag. Is that a tie? Wow. Is that a true tie <laughs> off the rail? <laughs> I think that's an actual tie, guys. Um, I, maybe one is frozen, one's not. I'm not sure. I think they both bounced off. That's crazy. They want someone to come take a look. <laughs> wow. It's very rare that you get an actual, actual pure tie. Yeah. It's especially, almost impossible. Especially the close on the rail. It's usually really easy to tell which one's won. Yeah. Wow. He's calling the 15 ball. <laughs> wow. That is close. <laughs> Bring out the rules. Where are the refs? Yeah. <laughs> that would be crazy if it decides the match. You know, imagine it's Hill Hill and yeah. uh, Francisco runs out on 7-7. Yeah. Seven, seven. That would be wild. And I, I think in 8-ball it's the most important. You know, the leg is the most important uh, part yeah. in 8-ball. Especially in 8-ball. Especially when you guys have got... These guys have got the, the speed of the break dialed yeah. so well that if they're making a ball, it's just like... There's almost no clusters on the table. The last two matches that we've watched, I think the first day there were way more clusters on the table. Mm -hmm. And now it's like this, the, the racks are just really wide open. And, and if there are any balls that are restricted at all, it's usually like they still have a pocket. You know, it's more just yeah. about position. So let's see. The seven ball doesn't go. Nope. This is a 15 ball. Yeah. Squat the rock on the cue ball yeah. and... I was I was playing. Who did I play? Um, <coughs> played one guy from James Davy in the first round. James Davy, I'm not familiar. <coughs> and I and I was breaking like medium speed, and I always had some clusters, right? So after that, I was figuring, okay, you have to break harder. Uh -huh. And then you now you can see everyone is breaking way harder mm -hmm. because it just opens up the rack better. Right. Sometimes it doesn't, but at this table with the magic rack, I think that's the best uh, break like Francisco did. And I think if Albin is breaking the same speed, like very hard, mm -hmm. and he's doing very well. Shane was doing pretty good too. Yeah. I, I think sometimes <coughs> Shane was actually overcooking it a little bit and getting 
you know it spreads open and then a couple more clusters come back but but uh he's gonna he's looking at taking the one and then taking dealing whoops dealing with this uh i think he can play a combo four point. seven so oh, that shouldn't yeah, be a yeah. problem Windows open, baby. Yep. Nice shot. Gonna slow roll that, I think. Who's in the booth with you? It sounds like Mario He. Yes, it is. There. Wait. My camera's unplugged. There he is. Get it? There he is. Okay. Crickets. Uh... How long have you guys been uh, traveling together now? Has, has this group kind of come together since COVID, or were you guys all f pretty close before COVID? Um, I mean, we are pretty close already for a long time because we always play the same tournaments, uh -huh. also in Europe. Uh -huh. <coughs> so, but this group usually was, this is the first time we, we traveled together with Francisco because usually he travels with the Spanish guys. Right, they are David not here. and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. in the end, we, we talked about it to travel together because we had the same schedule. Right. <coughs> yeah. Who are the other Spanish guys? There's David Alcady, FSR. Who am I missing? Uh, Alberto and Jonas. Oh, Jonas. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I think they're coming to the Boston. But they, have, they didn't get a spot for the... Ten ball in Las Vegas uh -huh. for a world ten ball. So Francisco was the only Spanish guy. Gotcha. And forgive me if I can. I I tend to have a bad memory with things like this. Who who made it to the PLP? Who got invited to the PLP out of that group? Um, Francisco, Albin, and me. Right. Oh, on. and Joshua and Joshua and Josh Filler. Yeah. Yeah. We now after this we go to Boston with Joshua. Joshua is joining us. Uh huh. So. Oh, he's gonna join you in the hotel. Yeah. Okay. We got, we have a house. Oh, a house. In Boston, nice, yeah. nice, nice. So it's wait, who is it? Max, Albin, Joshua, and me, and uh, Francisco is staying with the Spanish because okay. they are coming to Boston. Right, right, right. <coughs> Very cool. And at the PLP, we have a house also. I think, I think Francisco had to book it. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know if he booked it, but uh, it's Francisco, Albin, Josh, and me. It's a fun group. Yeah, yeah, you guys, like seriously, I know I know, I don't know you guys, <laughs> and, and uh, like on a personal level, obviously, but uh, just observing from afar, as I do or would do with yeah. my cameras, right? It looks like you guys are having a blast all the time. That's really cool. So with you guys, I, I'm assuming that the common language is English, right? <coughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk English together, but Josh, Albi, and me, we speak German. So right. when we talk to each other, we speak German. Right. Max speaks German, too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Austria, Germany. Yeah, Austria, Germany, Switzerland. We all do speak uh, German. Is it like uh, like all the schools? It's like a requirement that you're that you learn two languages, or is it just because? Um, or is German the predominant language? No, German is the first oh, okay. language. Got it. Got yeah, it, got, it, got it. But we do uh, s uh, learn two languages. That's yeah. German and English. Okay. Since around 15, 20 years, I think. Okay. English is. Uh, main subject in right. school. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I traveled. I, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? No, I had, I wanted to tell that I had French <laughs> oh, okay. for six years, but I can't speak at all. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> for six years? <laughs> I was bad. But, yeah. I, uh, I traveled to Singapore recently, and apparently in their schools, it's required that you become fluent in two languages. You get to choose what those two languages are, though, whether it's, uh, you know, Mandarin or English or Malaysian. Yeah. Is he asking about food or something? No, he Max just came with a phone, texted something to okay. ask me. Okay. And he asked me if I gave the table away because we were playing one pocket. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a bummer you guys aren't sticking around for that event. I understand why, but it would be fun to watch all you guys play some one hole. Oh, yeah. I, I like it a lot. I'm not really good at it, but I yeah. like it a lot. Yeah. Ever since uh, I, I like used chess. to. Yeah, exactly. I used to be like a, a rotation exclusive player. But mm -hmm. uh, ever since I started streaming, 
obviously there's a very large group of people that loves watching one pocket and there's always good gambling matches with one pocket and i've had a chance to watch a lot of it and i'm totally sold on it now it's gotten to the point where when i'm playing when i'm playing 10 ball too much with some friends it gets to the point where it's just a little boring mm -hmm. and one pocket's just so stimulating so interesting yeah kind of like the beginning of this tournament was quite interesting and stimulating but now since the racks are breaking wide open these guys it's like it's a pretty uh pretty straightforward runouts most of the time yeah i think the break's gonna decide uh who's gonna win i don't think they're gonna miss a lot yeah i think it might when there's one scratch or one dry break it might be it oops I just think F Francisco has a little advantage because his break is really, really good. He's almost never scratching, you know. But yeah, it was a know. scratch from Carlo Beato. Actually, they were they were uh, versus Roland Garcia. By the time they were eight games in, it was or sorry, yeah, they finished eight games, so it was four to four because first Carlo had two dry breaks yeah. and Roland played perfect, and then Roland had two dry breaks mm -hmm. and Carlo played perfect and uh, in that ninth game Carlo Beato breaks and scratches in the side pocket without a kiss like just wow. cue ball swings to the side pocket yeah, goes yeah. straight in just had a bad hit and from that point forward wow speaking of we almost had the same yeah. thing right there <laughs> in the same pocket too but but yeah that ended up being a really pivotal moment as far as like momentum and that match went yeah yeah it's so tough to come back from that when the other guy's playing perfect too, you know? Yeah. Which is brutal. It's just brutal. No real opening shot here for Stripes, huh? Mm, not really, no. I mean, I would go for the solids because of the 12. Is it the 12? Yeah, the 12 yeah. that doesn't have a pocket up here. Yeah. But still, the one is a little bit tricky. I mean, if you go straight to the one, you can play the eight in the side. But I don't know which ball he chooses. I mean, when the six goes, the six for sure. But well, the only the balls that lead there would be something like this or something on the seven, maybe to just drift down this way if yeah. you get a good angle on the seven. But and I'm not sure are those balls tied up. No, just the five goes in the corner there, like real close yeah. to the corner. Yeah. So if he has to play the seven, I think yeah, it's. It's going to be an interesting run out here. You say play the one last and shoot the eight in the side? Yeah, I would I would play that for sure because otherwise... Oh, he's he's looking ready now for that. I'm not sure. So what I, I, I would play is maybe the three, five, come almost straight to the six and draw it back near the side pocket. You would play straight three, on the six and draw this one. Right. Way. I mean, you don't like getting he, above the six and playing oh, yeah. off the rail, maybe? I don't think he can do that right now with the five. Uh huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, yeah, he can't. So. Oh, but this is the wagon can, wheel shot. The wagon wheel. Yeah, if, if that's possible. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's possible. But yeah, he's playing that. Yeah. That shot right there is why the drill of the wagon wheel is so important. You want to work on stroke fundamentals and like, like getting better at pocketing balls. The mighty X drill is the perfect drill. If you're new to m <coughs> moving the cue ball, man, that wagon wheel drill is yeah. is great. So now three breaking runs. Well, I think it would be the first time, I think, to have 15 runouts in a row if this happens, right? Yeah, right. Imagine. Yeah. Has that ever been recorded? Um, Does I, anyone in the I, chat know? I haven't seen it on a big stage, a uh, race to eight or higher. I haven't seen that. I've seen or I've played myself a rake where I run out seven or eight, but right. it was winner's break and that's... Right. You can get a momentum, yeah, right. you can like really feel the table. But then in this format, it's like, I don't know. The chat would know if there was somebody that has 
you know, any match that has gone literally break and run back yeah. and forth, alternate and breaks the And also alternate way. breaks, the pressure is totally different because you get a lot of more pressure in the last two, three games. Right, because things usually are yeah. close. And then if you don't, like, say you get to the hill and the other guy's trailing by two games, if you miss, all of a sudden they can be on the hill with you. Yeah. He slams it. Cue ball gets a little kiss, but makes it back to center table. F uh, 14 and 13 tied up a bit. And same with the 2 7 11. Yeah. What yes. about going crazy and just shooting the 7 11 combo right now? That's crazy, right? Mm. Now, cue ball's far away. It's possible, but I think the solids, they're pretty okay, I think. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, because you can get to the two pretty yeah. easily and use that to open yeah. the seven. Or you can play the seven into the corner. Yeah. If well, you get underneath it, you can bring right. the seven down here. And then you can play the four as well. Right. So getting to the two, then you got the seven and four. What about getting to the two right now? Because you can also use these things down table, the five maybe at least as somewhat type of insurance at some point if you yeah. have to. Yeah, yeah. That would be the only reason I wouldn't shoot the five right now if I wanted to use it later. Which rack are they using? The Taum Max Rack. It's a brand new template rack. Taum was a sponsor of the events. Um, yeah, brand new product on the market. He's looking at the combo and looking at swinging into the uh, the stripes right here, right now. This is the shot that I was talking about that that's there, but it's like high risk, high reward. I was looking for the combination. Yeah. So but the 14 is still not easy. That's why I mean the 13 goes, but the 14 is still in a tricky position. I think he tried to come for the two. Yeah, he's looking a little timid about it right now. Let's see what he left himself. Well, we can't see from there. I mean, so he's still good there. with the six ball. Guess he's gonna play a lot of left English if he plays the six ball. Yeah. Or he might draw it into it. You could use those two balls there to stop the cue ball, but you, you're gambling. Oh, he's using the four. There you go. Yeah. I was gonna say if he used these balls, he's gambling tying up the seven even worse, which probably would happen actually. But he can move the eleven no problem with the four as insurance. Look at this. Yeah. There it is. These Polish boys can play some eight ball, man. Yeah. And there are many, many more Polish players who play really, really good. Yeah. So a lot of them, they don't travel too mm -hmm. far to mm -hmm. play, but there are so many good players from Poland. Get the title here. Stop the rock. Next game. Little cinch, st cinch stroke hit it into the thick side of the pocket over here. Yeah, yeah right off the pocket facing right there. You can see the ball fall in. That's one of the things that I didn't understand for the longest time, like how you guys play so good and have like such a good cue ball. As soon as I realized, oh, they're not just... They're not just making the ball, but like even when the ball's way out here, you're picking like a spot in the pocket to hit yeah. to get the cue ball exactly where you want. It's one of those subtle things that that like people either don't know or like the better players just kind of take that knowledge for granted. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it's like it takes a while to to like really see and appreciate. So we got two to two. Four break and runs so far. We're still on for a perfect set. Yeah, it would be crazy if they make 15 break and runs. Yeah, that would be unbelievable. It's the first time I've seen that live. Right. 
I mean, I saw once at the World 8 Ball Championship, it was in... Where was it? Uh, Fujera, Al Fujera. It was... I saw seven break and runs each, and then one dry break, and the other one breaks and uh, runs out and break and run. So the other one played perfect, and one guy he Cue had ball. to break and run. Cue ball almost kissed in the corner right there. Oh, yeah. And the balls tried to cluster up, but they just barely... And now it lays came apart, good. yeah. Gotta say, I like solids here. Yeah. Six and one. I like to get straight on the one to soak the one because if you get the wrong angle on the one, you might get stuck at the cluster of the stripes. Right. I mean, you still have the four ball, but here you have a good chance to get a good angle for the one. But you know, eight ball, like, you can put the top five eight ball players on the table and they all play, not every time, but, you know, sometimes they play different patterns. Mm -hmm. But you're saying most of them decide to run things out the same way? Yeah, but, you know, it just depends on what shots you like, right? Because right. some people, they like certain shots more than He's other playing shots. the stripe to open. Oh, oh, duh. To play the four to take s solids. Okay. Was that to, like, make position not quite as tight on the, the six ball, you think? Or I have no clue. <laughs> That's interesting that he chose to do yeah. that. Maybe he doesn't like the ball in front of the pocket, you know, to, because it's always hard to get position uh -huh. when the ball is inside the pocket. Right. Especially when it's deep and you can't, yeah. like, access a rail right. cleanly, you know? Yeah. yeah. So now he doesn't like the angle to the six as well, so he was thinking to play the three. I think you can get through to the three. Looks like it goes. Yeah. The rest of the rack is pretty, pretty routine, I would think, from this point. A lovely nudge on the 12 ball. Yeah, Michael. What's up, M in the chat? Says, that's Mario. He awesome. He's so rad. I'm sorry. I like to make pun jokes, like where, <laughs> where uh, you know, I make jokes with anybody's name. But, yeah. You got, you got one of the best ones, man. Mario He. Joe, who's on first? He's on second. <laughs> Do you ever see that, that Abbott and Costello bit? What's on first? No. Who's on second? No. Who's on first? What's on second? It's a really funny uh, skit from the 60s or 50s or okay. something. It's like a, a really famous bit where talking about baseball, but... Interesting, so. he's kind of flat here, huh? He's going to have to... Yeah, it's... He's got he, that kind of between angle where you yeah, can't, like, really draw the ball. No, that's the problem with because the, the 14 is there, you know? Yeah. If he goes in, he has so he has one more big pocket. But now he has to play a really good position on the two. So if he has... If he is straight... You either have to, like, hit the ball, like, dangerously thick or dangerously overcut, like, to the, yeah. to the, the thin side of the pocket or the super thick side of the right. pocket to draw the ball, but he's looking at overcutting I, I, it and trying to run the cue ball I through these like stripes. That. Yeah, I don't like that. Wow. He might land behind the 15. Yeah, you got to, like, clip a really he, perfect spot on the If he has the angle to, to go into the rail, I like to punch draw it to the side or to the corner. Yeah. You know, to the cor down right corner, mm -hmm. bottom right corner and to the side. So he got two options. If he's straight, the, he has to draw it, but it's... Oh, Eight gonna ball, gonna be perfect. Yeah, that's a good shot. That is really good. So he was straight. Yeah. What Q and break Q does he play with? Uh, Francisco? You. Oh, he. me? Oh. He. <laughs> he capitalized he. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I played. Uh, <clears throat> 
Uh, I play an Exceed queue. I just got my own Exceed queue, uh, which I designed with Exceed together. Uh huh. So I'm playing this playing queue. Exceed in... queues are real nice. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the artwork on them are it's outrageous. Yeah. So I'm playing this since November. Okay. Um, playing with the Ignite Shaft, going back to Carbon. Still not feeling 100% with it, but it takes a little time to get used to that. Sure. Um, and I have to power break G from Mess. You said you designed the butt of your Q? Right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Together, is it like, together is there with the uh, uh, Mickey, you know, the owner of Mess. Uh -huh. We did it together. And I really like the final uh, product. Is it going to be a design that's available to the public or is it exclusive for you? Um, it's okay. it's for the public as well, uh -huh. um, but you have to order it uh -huh. and then they're going to produce it. Okay. So the 11 ball falls in the side and we have just a teeny little problem to solve on the table, but once again, the speed of the table... These well, guys have I really got it dialed. I just see Exceed is mess. No, uh, it's it's belongs to the company Mess, but it's our own brand. Yeah. It's our own Q brand. Gotcha. The guy that asked the question said, thank you, Mario, for sharing. No problem. Yes, Darren, this is not take what you make. The, the world standard rules in eight ball is it's always open after the break, so you have a choice of which grouping to, to pursue. Les R says he, <coughs> says he is the man. <laughs> there it is. Is he Problem. Victor, Francisco, or me? <laughs> <laughs> it's always going to be you. The other thing about my chat, I don't know if you've spent much time watching pool, because uh, I know you're super busy playing pool, but a lot of the, the chat rooms... In, in pool live streams are, are generally, um, what would you say? I have a different chat because I interact with them. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the people in the chat are uh, just there to have fun and like make jokes and enjoy the game and react together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you'll find that <laughs> they'll be making a lot of little fun, fun jokes the whole time. <laughs> They're always being sarcastic or always like, you know, kind of razzing each other, probably the way that you and and the boys do. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's cool. We have a lot of fun. Ooh, oh. a little kiss off the seven. What's going to happen? He's, he's definitely lost his cue ball. Yeah. I want this. I don't think he has a pocket, right? Because he took solids, right? Yeah, he took solids. Mm. Obviously, the three doesn't pass, and the five's never going to be Does the three shootable. go into the corner? The three goes into the corner, yes. I can get that right. Barely, uh, it's tough. I don't think he's gonna play that. I don't know. Oh, he's gonna play it. It's a tough one. Yeah. Or is he playing the six? Over six the off 13. of the thirteen. There yeah. we go. That's a good shot. For and pocketing uh, the ball. Yeah, and if he makes that, he's opening the seven also. So the seven has a pocket. That's a hard shot. I mean, this is one of them guys that's made his name largely from pocketing and running balls so let's see if he yeah. can execute no he hits it too thin straight into the 13 and all of a sudden stripes are a massive favorite in this run out the layout for stripes lays pretty good yeah fsr playing perfect so far victor Zelinski was right there with him until that kiss off the seven ball brutal He just decides to go straight out the gate and bump into the 15 because he has this 9 sitting in the corner. <laughs> the European Mafia Moscone team. <laughs> No, this isn't the final, guys. This is the hot seat match. So these are the final two players remaining on the winner's side. 
but we are playing, a, I think, a single race to 11 in the finals. So it's not like a true hot seat. It's more of a hot seat for the recognition of playing undefeated. <clears throat> yeah, what's your actual nickname? Have you been dubbed the Panda? Like the actual nickname? Because everyone in the chat calls you. No, it's Austrian Panda. Panda, yeah. Okay. Just Panda. Just Panda. <laughs> Oh, hey, yo, side pocket, just flirting with Oof. it, you know, just going to stop by and say, hey, <laughs> calculated right off the point. Little check side on this ball, probably a similar stroke on this one. Maybe maybe a pure high ball gets you there, actually, but off the 14. Are you are you a tournament poker player, like recreationally? Uh, I play both. Or do you I, prefer I, cash games? Oh, I prefer cash games because I don't have that time for playing yeah. tournaments. Yeah. But I just signed a, a deal, a sponsor deal with a casino near to my place. Really? Yeah. For pool or for poker? For pool. For pool. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Very cool. And we are uh, trying to make events, uh, pool events in the casino. Because yeah. they are doing darts, UFC. Oh, nice. It's a pretty big casino then. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, okay. in Liechtenstein. It's between Switzerland and Austria. It's like the small Switzerland. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. And... I know the Swiss like to gamble. <coughs> yeah. I yeah. mean... It's do the Austrians too? Or <laughs> do <laughs> Austrians too? Or no, I, no. I know the Nordic countries are... are yeah. Austria don't gamble really. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And yeah, well, they they are having the WPT for example uh -huh. in September every year. Mm -hmm. uh, they are having really big events in poker. So since I'm playing poker there, we got into talking about pool and poker, and they want to make yeah. a pool event. So you know, I think it's super interesting this this topic, and I've talked about it a number of times on my stream before. But the uh, in my opinion, pool is closer to poker than it is to golf even though it takes a similar level of execution as golf yeah. to play at the highest level of the game you yeah. get what i'm saying there yeah because in pool just like in poker aces will get cracked by ace king sometimes you will have times where you know the massive favorite player to win any given set you know mm -hmm. loses because of situational things because the things the game that we're playing happens on such a small surface compared to like golf or something like that it it happens on a very small surface but there's so many variables that you have to always account for yeah that in the same way that poker is is so random because the, a deck of 52 cards can be sorted more ways than there are atoms in the universe you know same idea applies in pool so many different things can happen even though yeah. we're kind of you know, uh, reducing it down into some repeatable uh, shots and repeatable strokes or whatever, yeah. it still has such a random aspect to the game that, like I said, I think it's closer to poker than it is to golf, even though it's a high skill cap yeah. of execution. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love poker. I play, I play a decent amount of poker. <laughs> okay. It's a good game. Not a good idea to compare poker to pool, is it? I don't know what you mean by that. Sorry? It's the chat. Ah. J the chat was just asking something. So this is on FSR's break or Victor's break? I think this is on FSR break. Yeah, yeah, because we were talking about poker. All of a sudden, the perfect uh, 15 but break wait, and runs is gone. They made a mistake. I think they made a mistake because FSR won the leg, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it would be. Let's, let's go back and watch. It let's would. It would be. I. I don't know if the score is 4-2 now. Oh, it is 4-2. Ah, okay, okay, okay. That's what. It yeah. Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it's 4-3 so now. 4-3 now. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, 
can't be because FSR. I got all started. excited about what you were saying about the casino that you got to deal with. It's it's a really cool thing. <laughs> yeah, um, they 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 try to make many events like darts. You know, it's mm -hmm. very popular right now in Europe and London, especially in Great Britain. Yeah, and they're gonna have it. Uh, Michael van Gerwen, do you know him? He's Who? the Michael van Gerwen. Van Gerwen. Yeah, no. he's the number one. Uh, no, he's not the number one right now, but for darts. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah. Oh, I don't really follow From darts Netherlands. at all. Netherlands. Oh, okay. okay. Anyway, he's coming to the casino to have a show there. I don't know if they're gonna make a tournament, but they wanna try to make a pool tournament as well. Uh huh. And That'd a backgammon really cool. tournament. A beginner tournament. Uh, backgammon. Oh, backgammon. Yeah. That's and a gambling game. And I heard game. they're gonna make a UFC cage inside the casino. No kidding. Yeah. Like actually UFC brand, like not one of the other brands, but actually by this the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I'm not hundred percent sure, but he was talking to me about that. And they have a event room where they're gonna put the cage inside with like dinner tables. Uh huh. You know, it's they have really nice plan it's really nice it's one of the nicest uh poker rooms in casino what i've been okay so it's really really nice this is an interesting spot off the break yeah what are the odds that you end up with this many clusters in the cue ball way mm. down on the short rail you're like in narnia down here you got no options yeah. how do you play safe well if he can i think he can go out here but it's very hard. If he can play the 11 and go into the cluster 10-9, yeah. then he in the end he can play the 13 and play the 14 on the other corner. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it's... Look at the head scratches. It's not impossible, but it's for sure not easy. That pretty much says it right there. He's already behind in the set. I would not be surprised if he takes a couple more minutes to think about this. Because this is a pivotal moment in the set. And also, really tough. Yeah. I'm not sure if he can go into the 10. Or if he goes by the 10 if he makes the I 11. I think with just, just rolling the, or like making the ball, I'm pretty sure the cue ball. Goes I look at a 10. lot of, yeah, yeah I look yeah. at a lot of screens and I'm pretty sure it just misses it. And then to yeah. be able to get there, the only way to get there is like punching the hell out of it, which you're never going to do because you're yeah. on the rail. and Or using the pocket and play it on purpose too thick. Yeah. But you don't like to do it because you might miss it. Yeah. And then you leave it. You mean like clipping the point on the way right, in? Right, yeah. Yeah. But you don't, I don't think he's going to like that. But I might play just a safety. Yo, uh, Cranford69 coming in with the 999 Super Chat says, Austria gambled on Arnold Schwarzenegger and won. <laughs> Thanks again for the stream. <laughs> sure. I don't know if it was Arnold gambling on Arnold or Austria gambling on Arnold, but Arnold definitely won. <clears throat> so he just kind of uh, played a safe trying to tie up some balls. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. I'm... It's like a shot where he forces to uh, Francisco to take the solids because he uh -huh. can't really play a strike. Uh -huh. But I don't think he's going to accept it and he's going to play a safety. This is the first, literally the first game in two days that we're seeing real moving yeah. in eight ball. And it's going to be interesting to see how they... Uh, Someone asked me about the brand. Yeah, um, I'm thinking of it. Not 100% right now but I'm thinking of something right now uh, let's see what the future brings yeah I, I genuinely believe that that's like the future of, of individual individual yeah. sports you know what I mean yeah, yeah like treat yourself like you are the Dallas Cowboys you know yeah, what I mean like yeah. and try to garner a following and get them pumped up about stuff and eventually mm -hmm. each player will have somebody that they work with where the player can focus on the pool mm -hmm. but then they have somebody kind of almost like what i'm doing with Federer. We're, we're still just kind of like muddying around in the water you know like yeah, trying to figure yeah. that out but but eventually it'll get to the point where i think the players will have somebody that they're working with to help them 
on the back end with that stuff so, you, so that the players can just focus on the game. Yeah. That's funny. I was talking to Tony, John, and he told me when he's on the TV table, he's going to break self and try to move the game. <laughs> <laughs> And well, I, that's what the people want to see. Yeah, with him. I told him I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, with him, they want to see that because he's he's a tactician, you know, and he, yeah. he likes doing the fancy moves and stuff. Look at the four ball coming right down on the cue ball. Imagine if he hit it harder. <laughs> yeah, but here you can see they don't leave you a shot for the stripes. They want you to, everyone, both of each, both want to che um, force each other to take the solids. It's not easy, obviously, but. Yeah, it's it's a uh, too much of a gamble, it, I think. Too. It's too thin, some. you think? Way too thin. Yeah, and they also he might get into the eight, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was saying actually to just go for it. <laughs> yeah. Like the real, true gamble shot. It's it's hard. I don't know. He might he might play the fourteen six combo. That's what I, I think, see now. I think the two's covering the, that. No, I, uh, is it? No, I think the fourteen six is available. Because if he makes the uh, okay, the five is not easy then. Yeah. I don't know if the five goes if the cue ball is here on the side pocket. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's looking for the fourteen six. I don't think I have a camera angle that can see that. But it's yeah, if he hits it not too hard, he has the two available and the seven. Yeah. That's a good shot. Oh, and the two down table, yeah. yeah. Wow. And to seven. So I think the five does go. I think there's just enough room. You think the five goes? Down here, yeah. O I think only just if you're like over here. <clears throat> if the five goes, I would like to keep the two ball just for an insurance. You can bump into the eleven to have position for the two ball. Yeah. Isn't eight ball really considered an American game by history? You know, Jimmy Bluffett, I'm not really a historian as far as the game goes. That's two things. I'm re three things. I'm bad with names. I don't really geek out about equipment and like cues and stuff like that. And then also, I'm not much of a historian, but God, do I love this game and is it fun to play? <laughs> The chat undoubtedly knows way more than I do about the history of this game. Correct, Crusher. I am not a commentator. I'm a streamer. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> He's thinking about shooting the two right now. He keeps going back and forth. He's maybe thinking about getting a better angle on the seven. Probably ended up a little bit too straight on the seven ball. And now he's looking at the four. One last problem to solve this rack. Does not want to let Victor back to the table because things have progressed far enough in this game where... If you make a mistake, it's probably a loss of game. He's going to play the four next. Yeah, if he see if he's able to make the five after the four, but I I don't see I don't know where from. Yeah, I don't think he has an, ang an angle to get to I the mean, good side goes, of the five, if it goes. It goes I in the upper corner pocket, but... Oh, yeah. To, yeah, he's, it's, it's hard. There's a real thin cut from there. There's only just enough room for a cue ball there in between the five and the, uh, the ten.
Ooh, Ramon. A uh, little too... Uh, this is going to be a touchy one for you, but he says, I'll go for Carlo Beato against Roland Garcia. He wants this U.S. Open 8-ball championship to win and added it to his collection as world championship. I think you might be watching the wrong part of the video because that match is over. Roland Garcia won. Got some new people in the chat, it looks like. Uh, don't recognize the accent. Don't recognize the voice. Who's in the booth with you, Collins? We've got Mario He Panda. Oops. Bank the five in the corner. Yikes, that's aggressive. I mean, there's always the option. Try to play position for the corner. And if you don't get it, you can still play the bank. Oh, he's... Oh. Talk about a tester here. Yeah. And it's got a funny, kind of funny line rolling out this way. Yeah. I think he's natural to get position, but that's a hard shot because, it's you know, it's shot. over if you miss it. I b I'm pretty certain that it does follow past the side, and the side's not a yeah. problem yeah. here. Roll it. Uh oh. Roll it. Oh no. Yeah. All right, Victor, show us the show us the magic. Show us the secret sauce. Cuz you're not out of the woods either, but FSR pretty you know, put himself in a pretty good spot picking the right grouping, right? And doing a couple of good things with that combo. Look at the 14 and 13 tied up. Does the 10 go? No, right? Does that combo go? I think it goes. It's really close. And you, if not, you can still cheat it. Yeah, throw the ball. Yeah. He's getting position on the combo, it looks like. I think he's trying to remove the 14 first. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then so that he can yeah. go back that direction after the 14 combo out of the way. Is, is going pretty easy. And if it's not straight, you can still cheat it a little Talking bit. Talking about the 9-10 combo? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, it's very close, so... That's one of my favorite parts about this game, is the subtleties of... friction, mm -hmm. you know? The mm -hmm. friction and, like, the fact that Everyone kind of, you know, obviously people who don't play the game, the first thing you always say, you always hear them say is, oh, I'm really good at geometry. As if you could just, <laughs> as if you could just pull out a protractor and then know how to shoot the shot. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? And it's yeah. like, well, that's so not the case in this game where that's a good starting point. Yeah. But to be able to uh, judge the slide of the ball judge the, how it's going to interact with the rail at whatever speed you're hitting the ball and and how the balls will interact with each other too it's it's so fascinating man he's rolling up to not play the combo yeah he's rolling up to play the 10 in the corner so he doesn't like the combo interesting Justin Snow says angle in equals angle out. If only that was the case in pool. Gonna draw into these balls. Nudge the 10 towards the corner. Missed it. Oh, he really doesn't like the combo. Wow. Missed it thin too. He was I'm, I'm almost certain he was hoping to hit that real thick so the 10 would go towards the corner. And now he has the option of a tight pocket or a ticky up table. Or a super long shot on the 13. He's going to play the n 9 over the 5. As a ticky. Perfect. This game's over. Yeah, 4-4. Four, four. Wow. We're to start again. 4-4. <coughs> four, four. So they've, they've both traded a win on the other player's serve. And now Victor's going to have to do that at least one more time if he wants to win this rack or this uh, this match. If if FSR has been pl keeps playing the way he's been playing, there you go.
what time or when do you guys fly out? Because you're flying out after this event, right? Yeah, we're gonna stay here for two more nights so until oh, nice. 12th of uh, March, and then we go to Boston. Try to rest up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Nobody looking to get in any action before you guys leave. You guys ever hang out here looking for? I don't know. Josh said we, he wants to go to the outlet. So to the outlet? Yeah. Like the store? Like the, the mall? Yeah. The, to, uh, yeah. To go the shopping. Northern Premium Outlet here. Uh huh. Yeah, he wants to buy a perfume. I showed him one perfume, and he said, "Oh, he wants to buy it." <laughs> huh. So he said, "Let's go there." Okay. We might go there tomorrow or in two days. I'll tell you what, Josh did not strike me as the guy that likes colognes and perfumes and stuff. Well, he likes. All right. Generally, in in uh, America, men who wear perfume, it's called cologne. They made a, a very, oh. uh, like, what do you call it? Like a, what do you say? A masculine word for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, I don't think we use it in Europe, cologne. I mean, I heard it. But we always say perfume. Sure, yeah. Also in German language, it's called parfume. Yeah, it's like a direct so, translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's what I figured. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we knew what you were talking about. Yeah, it's just funny, the different, different languages and different... It's funny that some men out here that really like their cologne, you know, yeah. and they make it, it makes them feel strong, you know, when they're wearing like a masculine yeah. scent. If you told them that they were wearing perfume... They, there's some men that would take it personally. <laughs> it's so funny, <laughs> culture differences, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Larry Cheek says, let me guess, cool water. What was the name of it? Do you know the name of the the scent? Um, no, but it's uh, France, a French brand. Uh-huh. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I think that, uh, didn't he just shoot a solid? Or is he taking stripes? Yeah, he, I'm not sure. I think, no, he played the stripes, right? No, he, he, pre he played the solids. He opened it and he doesn't really have a shot now. Yeah. He played it hard. It's a little bit unfortunate that he got stuck there. Yeah, really unfortunate. I mean, especially if it goes a little bit on the left or right, he can play the 7 or the 3. Or he can play the 3. If he can play the 3, he's alright. It's he's not an easy here. shot, but he's the favorite to make it. This song, this <coughs> song is ridiculous. Gotta change the music. It's funny because 8 ball is a game I think a lot of Europeans in the age of Francisco or mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. we all started playing with eight ball. Okay, yeah. Eight ball and straight ball, especially in Austria and Germany, I think. Uh -huh. People started to play eight ball and oh, he, he didn't he had save. To play safe, yeah. That's a this very good save. Look at wow. this shot. Oh, and he played back on the same ball. Yeah. Good lord, I'd be like. I'd be like ready to play the next game if I was Victor. Jeez, this is a hell of a spot. Yeah. Oh, just a friend of mine takes at me. He's oh, listening yeah. to me. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. He's From a, Austria? Yeah, yeah, very, very good 8 ball player. Oh, nice. Daniel is his name. It's it's pretty late over there right now, isn't it? It's like 11 o'clock at night almost, right? Uh, what's the time now? It's... Nine hours. Yeah, yeah. So it's... It's almost midnight. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he got weekend, right? Oh, that's fine. Moving into the weekend, yeah. Yeah. He's Real playing slow really kicking. Good. Oh, that's a good shot, Oh, too. my gosh. Wow. Oh, that's sick. I don't think he left a single look. No. Wow, a little tap. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Victor Zelinski. Cut it out. Can he kick it? Yeah. So he the got a good, first. Yeah, he got a good chance to play a safety again. Yeah. With with the uh, uh, what's the word? He's free rolling the pocket. Right. Yeah. Right. 
well, maybe free roll in the pocket. It's it has to hit it thinner than thicker, you know? Uh -huh. Better thinner than too thick. Yeah, better to overcut it. All right. So he's winding up. Float that cue ball. He's made it. Wow. Good shot. And he's got a little shot on the three ball. I think it goes in the corner, pretty sure. That was a really interesting <laughs> and good wreck from both. Yeah, really, really good exchange right there. Unfortunate for Victor after hitting the ball so damn good to leave any look at a rail first shot there. Yeah, that's how it feels, man. Brutal. That was a wreck. Both didn't do anything wrong, and yeah. Francisco just made a good kick shot and won. He got unfortunate to yeah. play, a sa to had to play a safety, and now he kicked it in and he's winning the wreck. That was an interesting game of eight ball right there. Definitely the most interesting of the last three to four hours. So who is up next here? Do you know it already? Uh, it's going to be the fourth place match. So the fourth winner between, match. you know, both matches for fifth, sixth are going right now. I, I think Albin is playing Joshua, right? Yes. So the winner of that match plays the winner between Bader and, uh, and Lee Van. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can get a score update on those uh, as this match has kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, Josh Filler dispenses Alvin Ocean at a score of 8-3 to three in less than an hour. That was a fast yeah. match. Uh, Lee Van Corteza currently on the hill versus Bader Alawadi 7-2. Uh, okay. So that's looking like Lee Van versus Filler. Another, like both of them guys just constantly making the final four of tournaments it's crazy yeah levan is doing really good here in yeah. vegas he finished he won the predator pro series the open yeah and then finished in the final four no yeah he finished third in the 10 ball yeah in the world 10 ball and now he's top four again right yeah and then he was top four top no, three top five was he top three in the 10 ball yeah he, he finished third i think i think it was third yeah and now he's in the top five. And probably the top four of the eight ball. Vegas has treated Lee Van well. Well, he's, well, he's yeah, kind of taken four. it. Right, top four. Yeah. Yeah, Lee Van is playing really good here. Which is really interesting to watch because his, his particular mechanic, like the way he moves the cue, yeah. you would think would not be conducive to consistent results. You know what I mean? But he does such a good job yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't play as many tournaments as uh, other pro players do. Mm -hmm. He just, it seems like he picks some tournaments he likes, and when he plays, he's always deep. Yeah. So, I would rather him to play, I would suggest him to play more when he's yeah. playing like that. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Oh, yeah, Lee Van did not play in the World 10 Ball, that's right. Yeah, he didn't get a spot. That's right. It's It's hard. So many good players who didn't get a spot. Like David from Spain. Oh yeah, that's crazy too. Yeah, the other one was uh, was Moritz Newhausen and then Sanjin Pelavanovic yeah, as well. Niels is not playing. Right. So, crazy. Yeah, there are many players who were not playing, and then he won the Vegas Open and uh, didn't get a spot. I mean, it's, it was too late anyway. But right. Yeah. Well, <coughs> actually, didn't they have someone not show? Uh, maybe I think I heard that okay. there was they were one player short and they, yeah. because it was you know invitation only or whatever yeah. you would have thought that it would make sense that if you had an opening to let the guy who won the I think Las if, Vegas Open yeah, play but the I event. think if the guy paid his entry uh -huh. he can't uh -huh. take his spot I think I, that would make sense because imagine you're the opponent the Levin would be your opponent and you would get a walkover because the other one doesn't show up and then right. you play Levin right <laughs> 
I mean, if if the entry fee is not paid and he pays the entry fee, that's a different story, I think. Maybe. But if he, if the guy who didn't show up, he paid the entry, right. I think this counts. Sure, know, because sure, he sure. might play this the first loser round, right? When he shows up. Yes, yes, yes. That's the only reason what I. They think. might have saved the yeah. spot or something. Yeah, yeah. Now they are back to running out. Yep, yep. Victor in the spot in a in a match where. You know he's. Uh, we saw it from Carlo in his match versus Roland Garcia. He had a chance to to move things towards Hill Hill, and he. What was it? He missed an eight ball across the whole table, like a very long, just off angle straight in eight ball shot. You know, misses it, and then the next game he kind of carried himself around the table as if it's like, well, yeah, I'll I'll do this run out, but. Roland's probably going to break and run the next rack. Obviously, Victor trying to not put himself in that headspace because we're still only halfway through this match, but you can see a little bit of a body language shift from Victor right now. Nice cue ball. No, Robert Kazan. Uh, no, that's not correct. Was saying about Sanjin on the Instagram said he wasn't invited to the World Ten Ball, and in the brackets it looked as if he was supposed to play and then forfeited two matches. No, that that bracket you're talking about was the Las Vegas Open, but I'm fairly certain that Sanjin had originally intended to play the Las Vegas Open, but when he found out that he wasn't invited to the World Ten Ball, he just decided not to come. I'm pretty sure. So Victor does tie it, but we have Francisco breaking. Um, I'm gonna uh, go grab a soda real quick. Can I get you anything to drink? Um, take a diet coke. Diet coke? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I got check. a wristband if you want. Uh, they're, they're good. Ah, I'm oh, sure. sure. Yeah. And then uh, uh, I gotta check with Mike on something. I'll be back in like two minutes. Okay. Yeah.
up, buddy? Hello? They left you in here all by yourself? Yep. Yeah? What kind of hospitality oh, is that? Francisco. All right, what do we got going on here, Panda? Fill me in. He made his second mistake right now. Back to back. Big spot in the match, Mario. Yeah. He's he's solid then. He got the stripes. He's got the easy, ooh, even worse spot. Who's break? Francisco's break. Oh man, even bigger, even bigger of a yeah. spot because has it been uh, a lot of breaking <coughs> runs? I'm guessing. In the beginning, yes. Yeah. And then Francisco made a mistake. Victor, the last game was pretty good. Francisco was a little bit unlucky. They played a safety game. Francisco kicked the ball in and ran out. But Francisco missed one ball into the upper corner two, three games ago. Right. And then he had a dry break. So could be already over if he would have played perfect. But now. What do you think playing the stick right here, Mario? Just hit the 11 ball. Just yeah. a little stop yeah. shot, right? You want to come yeah. up? Oh, I like that. I like that even That's better. I don't think you can see the ball. Yeah. Pretty effective? It's, I, yeah. Yeah, it's... What's the return here, Mario? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I would play the kick to the seven and try to stop it, you know? Oh, but that's a... How are you going to stop... Oh, okay. How are when you going to stop play, it, though? It would be that I mean, far off the I rail. Mean, when you play follow, it stops more. It has a higher chance to stop. But right. you have to play it really perfect. You might even make the seven into the side if you play a follow. No. But other... Other than that, I don't think there's something good because you don't want to... You might also, if you kick the 7, you might touch the 2 ball and freeze it up to the 13. So it looks like Levan Corteza has beaten Bader. I don't know what the <coughs> score line is, but they are going to be... Oh, that's a pretty nice wow. shot there, Mario. Yeah. He hit that pretty well. He played it soft. If he would have played it a little harder, it might stop, you know? Yeah. Because he hit it perfect. Right. He almost... He hit it in a good straight. spot. Yeah. Yeah. So the filler and Levan match is going to be played. Oh, taste that. Check it. I'm pretty sure that's the diet. Is going to be played uh, after this match. So everything else from here on out is going to be played exclusively on post up, with the exception of the finals. That's going to be on Griff's Billiard TV. Make sure if you haven't already, go subscribe to that channel because that's where we will be playing at to end the event. It's going to be finished today, right? We're finishing today, buddy. We're finishing today. Are you going to Boston after this? Uh, we're going to fly on 12. Okay. Yeah, so you got a few more days left in Vegas. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What are y'all doing tomorrow? We may go to a hockey game if y'all want to uh, join. You go to the hockey game? I think Francisco we're going to Francisco wants to go outlet and Joshua as well. Oh, yeah, shoe shopping. Uh, Fra Joshua wants to buy the cologne. I learned the word. Yeah? <laughs> And what? Francisco wants to buy some, I don't know, some clothing. I'm not sure what he wants to buy, but he told me he wants to go before he leaves uh, uh, Vegas. Good call, buddy. Good call. I'm, I'm with you on that camp. I want to go check it out as well. Maybe tomorrow after yeah. we get done with our responsibilities in the morning. He don't like something, Panda. What is he, what is he looking at? I don't think he doesn't like the 12. 11 and the 12 is tricky. What about just... Drawing into the rail, I think, and pulling it back out for the 11. If honestly, I think the easiest way would be playing the 15 and then the 11, right. draw it back between the 8 and 7. Right, and you got a natural position for the See, this is what I like right here, Mario. Right here, yeah. But now, now it's tricky to get position on the 12. It's tight window, you know. That's why I like to go forward and draw it back a little bit. You have a tougher 12 ball, but you have a guaranteed position, yeah. He's going to have to come with the shot here yeah. in a massive game. And if he gets the position here, he's out. But this is a small window. The winner of this is going to be in the hot seat. Guaranteed second place. The loser of this is going to face the winner of Levan Corteza. Sorry, the loser faces the winner of Levan and Josh Filler. What an yeah. unbelievable uh No one wants to lose play. here. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah. How do you like the event so far, Mario? Oh, Ooh, I don't think he got there, Mario. Oh, no. I don't think he got there. No. His face kind of says it all. Yeah. I think his has to, he has to play the bank. The cross? Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm not sure if he gets double kissed if he plays. I think if he plays uh, up left. I think we just. I think if he can hit it full enough and just with the high ball, I think you can fade the kiss. I don't think you got to spin it in any. Oh, he can't even. Oh, he's jacking up. He's in real bad shape here. Yeah. Is he getting the jump cue out, Mario? Maybe. Oh, it's a tall task, man. He's it's getting a break the break cue out to jump. Explain to us laymans, us amateurs, what's the benefit of jumping with the break cue versus jumping with the short cue, Mario? Look at that oh. shot. What a shot there. From <clears throat> well, it gives you the mo uh, from it Francis. gives you a better feeling, I think, because it's the length and the weight is similar to a plane cue, right? Right. So when you play a normal shot, you play it with a plane cue, it feels normal. Right. When you play with a jump cue, it's lighter, it's shorter, so it's not the same, you know? It's yeah, yeah. different. I mean, you know, people, uh, even if people practice a lot with the jump cue, I think with the break cue, it gives you the natural feeling of a plane cue. Right. It gives you more confidence to make the ball. Well, but I, I think it's harder to jump. Tell you what, he came with the big one there in the big spot. 5-5 five, five on his break, but he's not out of the woods yet, Mario. He's got to come with one more shot. How do you fancy your boy making this one? I think he's favorite to make it, but I don't like to shoot this shot. I don't <laughs> think he likes to shoot this shot, too. <laughs> in the uh, hole. Yeah, that's perfect. Nice shot there from Francisco. All right. I mean, they come with some really good outs. Some good safety games. Deserved hot seat match. What do you feel about the series of events overall, Mario, from a player standpoint? You know, shoot me straight here. Here for this season? Yeah, yeah. Um, I like it. Yeah. I like the table, you know, for me, diamond table is one of the best to play. Right. If not the best. Um, the only thing what I would maybe change. What's that? Yeah, is let, let's hear it. Eight ball wooden rake. Okay. See, I like that because I don't like the break and run fest. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I am with you there. Listen, sh big shout out to our sponsors, Town. They are our, our sponsors of the event. Yeah. Provided us with the Max Racks. But from someone who just loves watching great pool, it's a little bit easy seeing all these, you know, big breaks and everything yeah. wide open. I'm, I'm with you. I think I would prefer to see um, a triangle. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure what's the best, you know, format for 8-ball. Yeah. I think should be tight pockets for eight ball because then it's well listen, the pattern is more important we can't change the pocket i know the, the, I know. the rack's a little bit more a uh, more uh, yeah. uh reasonable request yeah um but the, the max rack is doing its job right it's freezing the balls yeah. it's making the break just you know in an unbelievable advantage because right. you know you're really taking a not a risk you know if you're if yeah. fancy if you like your break you're busting them up you're making a ball you get a spread like this yeah. mario and then it's it's curtains because you guys are yeah. running ball so well I think the best thing about the magic rack is that every player gets the same rack. Right. You know, that's, that's that's a fair game, I think. Yeah. But you know, I think if it's it's a difference when it's a race to eight or a race to fifteen or twenty. My only, like, I don't want to say issue, but potential issue, I guess, when it comes to using the wooden rack is I don't want to see guys racking the balls for three minutes. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to see guys doing that over and over again yeah. the other thing that i'll say is like for rotation and for and for eight ball is i don't want to see you guys or any guys for that matter mess with the one ball <coughs> yeah know, that's something for me that i don't, I don't like yeah. seeing i know what they're trying to do i know what the you know the advantage players are trying to get and for the most part you europeans are pretty you know you play within the rules and and we didn't have a rule in place for it but i would prefer and this is probably something that i'll bring up is just no messing with the one ball you get it yeah. set leave them alone and you break them as it as it is so or what else would make it maybe attractive is using the magic rack and break from the side yeah yeah see i think that's a little too gaffy for me you know what i mean I'd rather just if you want to get rid of it get rid of it and, yeah and, and again it's doing its job but for for big top players it's they're breaking the ball so well all these yeah. guys are hitting the ball so square you got a big break as well you know so um i got out because of my break is that right <laughs> yeah yeah, I broke th I broke dry a few times and that's it. That's it, man. Yeah, you know, that's it. But that's just the pool gods, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you live by it, you die by it. So, um, but we got some opportunities to work on. We've been bouncing around some ideas, like I've mentioned before in the chat. So, um, I appreciate all you guys for sticking around. You know, all you European boys hanging out and 
I wish we get to see you play the one pocket because I know you. I know oh, you can ball. I, I love the game, but uh, I'm not really good at it. Who's the best European one pocket player out of, let's say, the obvious like Federer and, and Josh? Um, who? I know who I think you're gonna say, but I want to hear what you. What, what okay, you so I think there are maybe two, three more. Okay. It's Dennis Gray. That's who I was gonna say. Dennis Gray really he he stays in it yeah. when it comes to gambling one pocket when he's here in the states. Then Victor. Zelensky. Really? I think Victor? he's good. Yeah, I think he's good. Really? I would have never guessed. Um, and I I don't know, but I think Nils because he finished run up once at the yeah. one pocket, right? Did at he? the Derby. He did. I think he he's did. never won the Derby. No, one second. Pocket. Yeah, has he really? He finished second once. I, didn't I know think. That. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I we, heard need, that. we need someone in the chat to maybe confirm it. Maybe a Derby <coughs> specialist can confirm. But Dennis, I do know because I remember years ago when I saw y'all on Aiken, you know, maybe yeah. like during COVID, right? During yeah. that time, <laughs> uh, Dennis was staying in the one pocket gambling, man. Every time I'd yeah. see him in between matches, he was playing by the game all around the country. Yeah. Um, he's got the patience for it, for sure. No, I, I really like one pocket. You know, I, I really love it. It's just also I love to watch it. When yeah. there are two good players, you know, oh. and you, oh, he's good though, right? Because now you can yeah. use the, the what is it, the fourteen ball? He can play the twelve, and then fourteen. Oh, the 12, that's what I meant, twelve ball. In the, it's the even pink, better to the play the twelve. Yeah. yeah, the twelve for the fourteen. For the eight, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Big game here to hold serve six six in a race to eight. This is the hot seat match at the U.S. Open uh, eight ball championships. Yeah. A little six, touchy six. there. But he's good. Yeah, I think he's yeah, good. He's good. He's got perfect angle. Yeah. I think just to roll up if he wants to. Yeah. He can shoot so straight, man. Yeah. So you're going, but you are going to Boston after this, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You making a Moscone Cup run this year? I'm not thinking about it. No. I'm not thinking about it too. Don't give me that answer, Mario. Come on. Don't give of me course, that I won. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's. I, 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 I was the last few years. I was always thinking about it. You know, and then. Yeah. I just don't want to think about it and just play. It's getting tougher. I know. You know. Yeah. It's getting tougher because a lot of not only a lot of good players coming up, but all the traveling that's associated, you yeah. know, with it. Um, but your break has been pretty great in this format, you know. You've you you've shown consistency in form playing this yeah. not on the spot break. Um, talk to me about the million dollar tournament though, World Championship. I have no information, no? so I don't know what to say. But I'm really happy that it happens. What you know? What's been like the feel amongst all your buddies, all these all these top guys? Sorry? Yeah, like, how are they feeling? How are your buddies like? I mean, every Josh and everyone and is excited. And everyone yep. is excited, yeah, because we all don't know what's exactly the sca uh, prize money breakdown. Right. We don't know how it will be set up there because I think it's gonna be huge, you know, Massive. because they also uh, put the snooker there. Right. So I think everyone is looking forward to that. So look, there's a lot of people, myself included, feel like you've been. Maybe on the cusp of being on the Moscone Cup, you know, maybe the last, yeah. maybe the first guy left off the team, you know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's tough to say, but you know, it's like you think about five guys, you may be number six a couple of years, you know, and so, yeah. um, you know, we hope I you think make the last five years I got one spot, four times one spot away and one time it's two pretty, spots it's away. It's pretty gross, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty <laughs> tough when you think about it like that, man. Yeah. You know? So that's why I don't want to think about it. Yeah. I just want to play. I mean, look, you got a lot of fans, my best buddy. You got a lot of fans, myself included. You're an easy guy to root for. You got a good attitude. And you play the game well, you know? Um, Thank you. You just got to take that. You, you're you're like tip it toe into the line, yeah. right? You're so close. You just got to make that one one more little push, bro. Yeah. You know? So. That's what I try to do this year. Yeah. I'm, I'll I'm, give everything. I'm hoping you do. Let me tell you something. I've, we've done some like drafts, right? Like amongst ourselves, amongst some friends of mine online. And uh, I've picked you many times to win events. Oh, you know? I'm sorry. That, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, trust me. I know. No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, I, I just, that's the kind of faith I got in your game. And that's where, that's where your game is at these days. Yeah. And um, it's everything. Meanwhile, let's talk about the match for a little bit. 6-6. Six, six. Fran's got some issues here though, it looks like. Yeah. 
What are you What are you picking here? I'm because picking the stripes because you can run out without touching any balls. Okay. That's the first thing what I look when I play eight ball. So you're saying you're what getting this 15 ball out of the way for the 14 then, or whatever? What's this yeah. orange ball? Um, okay. that's the 13. So, that's, so you're getting a 13 ball out of the way if for the 14. If he can shoot a 13 now, do it now. I'm not sure. No. <laughs> um, because it's pretty tricky because after 10, 15, and 11. Right. <clears throat> I might, oof, it's tough, it's tough, it's not easy. When he can go into that, playing for, you know, into the 14, he might have guaranteed position for the 12. Is that what he's looking at? And he has a saver ball of 10 ball. Yeah. But the thing is, so it's you not even about the make right now. He's looking about all where he wants to come into it. Oh, that's, that's even better. Is it? That's even better. And now he, he can, can play the 12. The he can play the 14 hold on the 5, or right. he can play the 12 and kill the cue ball for the 14. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So, now, yeah, I would run into the 5 because he can get from the 12 to the 11 or 15. Because the 15 might be a problem. If you don't get good it's position, tricky. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't play the 15 before the 10. Uh oh, oh, that's not that's good. No bueno. But he can play the 10. Yeah, he's got insurance. Yeah, so now he can play the 10 and the 15. Or I will play the 10 and the 11. And then what the are you doing that with inside? I play inside two rails. Okay. Go into the uh, go play position for the 11 into the other corner. I got you. And then you can play the 15, get the right angle there and go one rail into the 12. So 10 ball, 11. 15, a little bit of right 12. English. You want to come up for the 11 ball in yeah. the upper left hand pocket. Yeah. Play the 15 in the same pocket as a 10, and then come out one rail for whatever whatever this ball is. The 14 yeah. ball. 12. I like that. 12 ball. Sorry, yeah. I can't get my colors right now. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. It's been a long week. Yeah. It's all about this first shot, and if he can get it down, he might play it without English, but out. Yeah. Oh, he's playing the in the side then. Right? Oh. Can they go on the side? I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. A, I don't know if we got an overhead. I don't want to start pressing buttons in the middle of the match here. Well, he can play the 15 in the side. He better hope he can. Well, not he's got the corner, but... Uh, or maybe he's got the corner. I don't know, Mario. Oh, he's got the side. Oh, okay. I was wondering why he played that soft, okay. because I was scared if, if the 15 doesn't go. You don't think this is what he was playing for. He's just adjusting here. Or do you think you've had that intention from the beginning? Uh, he, he might, because now it looks like pretty Great. easy. Yeah. yeah. So that's perfect. Oh, he's, 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 I didn't see that uh, goes doing, into the side. He's doing great here now. Yeah. Oh, right. oh. You made this missable, huh? I think it'll be fine. Tougher than it could be. Let's say it like that. <laughs> He got it though, Mario. Yeah. He got it down. Seven six. On the hill. Great standard, man. It's a really good match. Really good match. Who is in the booth? So I got, I'm Molina Mike. I got Mario He, the Panda, joining me. And uh, we're here live from Griff's U.S. Open Eight Ball Championship. This is the hot seat match. The loser of this gets to face the winner of Lee Van Corteza and Josh Felder. They will be next on the TV table. And, uh, yeah, we're going through till we get a champion. Who do you like, Lee Van or Filler? Listen, there's a few <laughs> guys who have had Josh's number over the years. Lee Van is one of those guys, Mario. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't know, man. It's tough to bet against either one of them. You know? I never like to bet against Josh. Never. No? Doesn't yeah. matter who. I don't blame you. I, 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 I don't blame you one But Levan is playing really, really good the last he few is. weeks. For sure. I don't know, man. I guess flip a coin. I mean, both of them are playing extremely well. Look at that. Powerful break. Yeah. He got a couple balls down. Is anything going to tie up, Mario? Mm. No. I don't think it. Maybe. No. Yeah. Stripes yeah. look good. He's, yeah. I think he's gonna have to shoot stripes, but that's a tough opener. I think the 14 is, if he's not checked up, the 14 Oh, no, he don't have, well, what a, he, Oh, he can play the 411. I forgot that. <laughs> okay, if you can play that, then that's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you playing that is the, is the move. Yeah, I always forget that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you like that, or would you rather play, like, uh, 
take what you make. Uh, I never thought about it, but yeah. You I just uh, the, you, uh, in Europe, y'all play just you can shoot the combo after the break, though, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. See, I think take what you make is a whole other level of like added where you can make the eight ball a lot more difficult, you know, because then you don't get the yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. He went with your shot, Mario, and everything is looking wide open, barring any kind of uncharacteristic miss. Victor is uh, a few balls away from making this a hill hill match for the hot seat. Yeah, it's out. You've been known to, to gamble a little bit from time to time, right? Oh. Would you like to you'd like to fire would you like to fire a little friendly Rick wager on the uh, next match? Let, on let the me, next one? Let me tell y'all something about Mario that y'all may not know. Mario is not only does he like a sweater, but he, he may like the best of it <laughs> when he, when he, whenever he does fire. He's laughing because he knows. Meanwhile, Victor's about to make this hill hill. We'll do some friendly, Mario. You know, I'll take Francisco. No, no, not, Fran oh. not on this rack. I, oh. I'm not, see, you see what I mean? You see what I mean? He, he's willing to take the guy who's breaking the balls. That's how nitty, my man. Oh, the next game. In. No, the next match. Uh, filler, I, filler and Lebeck. I like filler. Of course you like filler. Okay. So what do you, what what do you want to do there? I don't know. What we'll do you do, want to do there? We'll do a little some we'll do something friendly. We'll talk about it. We'll do a little friendly a little friendly cash wager. We won't mention the amount, but if you're willing to do it, I'll take Lee Ben and we'll and we'll have a good time with it, huh? Alright. Yeah? Alright. Alright, we got something. We got it going. There you go. But I, I didn't get what we bet for. What's that? What did we bet for now? Hold Nothing, on, right? No, yeah, we're betting something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. We're betting something. We'll bet, we'll bet a little. Look at that. Someone says 20 push-ups. Can you do 20 push-ups for him? Uh, it's, it's hard. <laughs> I think 15 maybe. 15? 10, 15. All right, listen. I will bet I will bet the 15 push-ups. All right? You good with that? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> you got Josh. You're stealing, man. We'll figure something out. Meanwhile. I don't know. What's a fair bet? Leave on plus one. I'll take Leave on plus one. Yeah. You I, give I, me a game, I don't know I'll what I don't know what's fair. I'll take a game. Yeah, sure. I mean, since you're offering me a game, I'm not gonna say no. I will take I will take plus one in a race to eight, taking Leave on. Done deal. Maybe like a friendly fifty on top then while we're at it, huh? And some push-ups. <laughs> huh? We'll figure something out. Meanwhile, Francisco's got a ball down Mario, and everything looks wide open. You know. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the only key here is to get on the good side of this nine and and um, and fourteen, no nine and, and twelve, whatever it is. Hmm. Because it doesn't look like it passes to the ten. I mean, to the left side. Excuse me. Right. I'm not even sure if you take the stripes. Oh, you like you like solids then, huh? Mm, I I don't know what I like. It's it's both pretty okay. You know, I think if you take the solids, you got a little tougher first shot, the one ball. Yeah. But then everything else is good. Everything easy, you know. Right. You don't have to move the cue ball a lot. I think he's with you, man. In the stripes, you have to move the cue ball more, but you have easier shots. I got you. Okay. I think you're right, and he did, and I think he's he's pretty close to home now because everything yeah. looks real good. It's just I mean, coming with that first opening shot that may be a little tougher than than taking the yeah. other side of it. Oh, uh, The two goes by the three, it's very easy. If it doesn't... Are you trying to just like hold here for off the four? I, or? Would, I would play the four and hold for the two or three, whatever right. is possible. Right. But if he's straight on the three, he can draw it back right now. But right now. I don't like to keep the four because I don't know if the four goes into this corner. Either way, because you got real good on this, Mario. Not, no? yeah. I mean, he's good. You can you can stop the four ball here if you want to, you know, and then you got either choice. If you don't want to move the cue ball a whole mm -hmm. lot. I'm not sure if he's playing the four. He got some angle on the four, right? He's got a little bit of angle here on this three ball. Here. Yeah, that's... It's a good problem to have, though, when you got the cue ball yeah. on the center table yeah. and you got everything wide open, right? 
Yeah. It's really what you feel what you feel is best, and everyone's got their own pattern. He's opting for. Yeah, if he can, can kill the cue ball for the three, it's that's perfect. That's what yeah. I kind of like here. You know, now you get back in line. Yeah. Slap shot, draw out one, maybe even or not even hit the rail off the six, and then you're good with the eight ball in the bottom in the bottom right. Right, because you're going three six here, right? Yeah. Okay. Three. Stop it or draw it back a little bit. Yeah. Maybe a few one two inches. He's overthinking this a little bit, Mario. Is it well, just, just, just trying to make sure you get perfect? I just think he tries to get it as perfect as possible yeah. to not make, uh, to have no chance to make any silly mistakes. I got you. Because if you got a little bit of a wrong angle or if you're like jacked up a little bit, it makes it tougher. And it's not like he's going to make a mistake, but there's a chance. He's going six coming off one rail here, Mario. Yeah, I don't think he likes the 10 near the six. That's why he played a six, but... He's good. Come out one rail, center table. Yeah. Game set match. There it is. Yeah, it was a really good set from both. Really great match. Mario here, I want to thank you for joining in with us. You guys make sure and hang out. Francisco Sanchez Reese is in the hot seat. Victor Zelinski plays the winner of Josh Feller and Lee Van Corteza. That match is coming up next here in just a couple of minutes you guys hang tight hit the like hit the share button and we'll be back shortly you guys thank you it was a pleasure